Hello students welcome I am Jyoti Rajput and today we will study the structure of nucleus Here you can see the diagram of the nucleus The nucleus it comprises of the nuclear membrane Here in this diagram you can see the nuclear membrane the inner membrane and the outer membrane Next is the nucleolus which is a dense structure Next is the transparent fluid structure that is called as nucleoplasm and the last is the chromatin fiber here you can see the thread like structures these are called as chromatin fiber so in detail we will study the structure of the nucleus the outer membrane the inner membrane the nucleoplasm this nucleolus and the chromatin fibers Here when we study about the nucleus first we will study about the nuclear membrane as you can see the diagram this is the nuclear membrane this is the nucleus and this is the cytoplasm here the nucleus it is separated by the cytoplasm by the help of the nuclear membrane nuclear membrane it is also called as nuclear envelope or you can see nucleolemma or you can say karyotheca here this membrane whenever we observe this membrane there are actually the two membrane the outer membrane and next is the inner membrane here each layer it consists of about 75 to 90 angstrom in thickness and both the layers they are parallel roughly parallel to each other Here, when we talk about this nuclear membrane, it is made up of lipid and protein. That is why they are lipoproteinaceous in nature. And when we talk about both the membrane, the space which is present between these membrane, the outer membrane and the inner membrane, the space is about hundred to one fifty angstrom. And here, this space it is also called as perinuclear space. which is going to be kind of a irregular or discontinuous with varying width here further the outer membrane it is rough because there is presence of the ribosome attached on the surface and here the outer membrane it is always in continuation with the endoplasmic reticulum further the inner membrane it is smooth because it doesn't have any kind of ribosomes attached on the surface and here the inner membrane it is always in a support by another layer that is fibrous lamina here the green layer you can observe this is called as fibrous lamina so here the inner membrane it is always attached to the fibrous lamina so the inner membrane it is supported by the layer that is fibrous lamina further the next is going to study that is a nuclear pore complex as you can see the nuclear membrane here on the surface there are some pores are present these are called as nuclear pores so at every interval here there are perforations are present in the nuclear membrane these perforations are called as nuclear pore these nuclear pore they have a very important function they are the one which is going to help in the transport of various types of material from nucleus to cytoplasm and from cytoplasm to the nucleus further when we talk about the nuclear pore the nuclear pore per unit area of the envelope varies so here according there is going to be a difference in the cell so there is going to be the difference in the pores per unit area and it also depends upon the physiological state of the cell if there is a difference in the cell of in regarding the physiological state there is going to be difference in the nuclear pore present in the nuclear membrane and these nuclear pore they are the one which are aligned with the nucleoplasmic channel so they will act as a channels the material will move from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and from cytoplasm to the nucleus by these channels by these pores here it is estimated that the number of pores which are present in the nuclear membrane they are ranging from about 10 sorry 100 to 5 by 10 raised to 7 in different different cells and here it is said that the pore number it is related to pore density 
इसका मतलब है हेयर इफ द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल्स आर मोर फ्रॉम न्यूक्लियस टू साइटोप्लाज्म एंड साइटोप्लाज्म टू न्यूक्लियस देन द नंबर ऑफ न्यूक्लियर पोर इट इज गोइंग टू बी मोर एंड इफ द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स मटेरियल इट इज लेस देन द न्यूक्लियर पोर नंबर इज आल्सो गोइंग टू बी लेस सो दिस इज हाउ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द न्यूक्लियर पोर्स लुक लाइक हेयर इट लुक्स लाइक अ बास्केट this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane so this region is going to be the cytoplasm and this region is going to be the nucleus further here when we talk about these pores there are some electron dense material it is present and is enclosed by some annular material and these annular material they are kind of a granular in structure so the pores which is enclosed by the structure are called as annuli here these uh, pores which uh, uh, annuli which along with pores forms a nuclear complex here when we observe the nuclear complex here the complex it is about 600 angstrom in diameter so when we observe the pore nuclear pore it diameter is about 600 angstrom and it is kind of an octet in shape octet in shape means it is having kind of a eight shape that is called as octagonal in shape and here the octagonal in shape it is because of presence of some eight granules they are present here each with diameter of about 15 to 17 nanometer and here they are evenly distributed at regular interval here when we observe the annular material they are amorphous it means they are the one which are able to absorb the fluid content so that is why they are able to extend on either side in this side also outer side also and towards the inner side also it means they are present at the margin of the pores and the annulus as it has the diameter the outer diameter is going to be about 1200 angstrom and the inner diameter it is going to be about 300 to 500 angstrom overall when we see the structure it is kind of a rigid structure next we will talk about the nucleolus so suppose this is the nucleus there is a dense structure present that is called as nucleolus here nucleolus was first disco- described by the scientist fontana in 1781 so here you can see it is large and it is towards the periphery it is towards the one side of the nucleus so that is why it is called as eccentric and it is always located at the periphery region which is always inside the nucleus so there is some of the cells which can have more than one nucleolus also so the number of nucleolus in a cell it depends upon the type of the cell the size of the nucleus it depends upon the synthetic activity if the cell it is doing more activity then there is going to be more number of nucleolus in a cell and if the cell they are doing less activity then the number of nucleolus inside the nucleus it is going to be less in number so here if the cell it is having more the activity then the more the synthetic activity the larger bigger the size of the nucleus it is nucleolus is going to be so it means here the size of the nucleus it depends upon the synthetic activity more the synthetic activity bigger larger is the size of the nucleolus there are some of the cells in which the nucleolus shape may be different some of the cell they have fragmented nucleolus and some of the cells they may have the diffused form of the nucleolus the main function of the nucleolus is they are the one which are producing the ribosomal subunit so whenever we talk about the ribosome they are made up of two subunit one is going to be the larger subunit and one is going to be the smaller subunit here when we talk about the uh prokaryotic cell and when we talk about the eukaryotic cell there are always the larger subunit and uh, smaller subunit when both the subunits come together then only the ribosome structure is going to form and then they are able to do the protein synthesis so nucleolus are the one which are making these ribosomal subunit some of them are going to be larger subunit and some of them are going to be smaller subunit both the subunit they are made up of pro 
protein and our RNA that is called as ribosomal RNA and when both the subunits come together which are made up of protein and our RNA they are the one which are involved in the process of formation of the protein synthesis so here you can see the dense structure this is the region where the nucleolus it is present inside the nucleus when we talk about the morphology the nucleolus may change during the cell cycle so it means whenever the cell is going to divide here when it enters into a cell cycle there is going to be a change in the nucleolus for example when we talk about the prophase it disappears and here progressively during the metaphase and during the telophase it again reappears it means in metaphase it becomes dispersed and in telophase the nucleolus it again reappears and in the interface you can see the dense structure the nucleolus it is present in irregular in shape and it is quite visible it is quite prominent further when we study more about the nucleolus it is a mass of accumulated material here and it has uh, it is involved in a number of metabolic changes in the nucleus and here it can be stained by using the pyronin stain here in the nucleolus there are two distinct regions first is the central homogeneous region where it is surrounded by fibrillar region containing dense granules comparable to ribosome and here the granules they are very small in size about 10, 15 to 20 nanometer in size the next is the fibrillar region it is composed of fine thread and occupies the central region in some cases when we see the nucleolar region it is surrounded by a ring of chromatin material that is called as fusion positive this chromatin which is present the chromatin is fibrillar the chromatin it is fibrillar and represent the heterochromatin region sometimes extending into the nucleolus now we will talk about the function of nucleolus the very first function of nucleolus it is involved in the formation of the ribosomes ribosomes subunits they are formed by the nucleolus and here that is how we call nucleolus it is a ribosome producing site here suppose imagine this is a dna and the dna they do have genes and the genes are the rrna genes here they are present in the nucleolar organizer region of the chromosome here there is going to be a transcription process and for the transcription process there is a requirement of enzyme that is rna polymerase 1 is required and the rrna that is ribosome it is required then only the transcription process is going to takes place further whenever the transcription process will takes place there is a formation of the uh, proteins and the proteins are always synthesized in the cytoplasm of the cell here then these protein again they enter into the nucleus by the nuclear membrane you can say nuclear envelope and here now the rrna that is ribosome it is packaged with the ribosomal protein so that there could be formation of the ribosome so in this way the 45s ribosome here you can see the 45s the ribosome are manufactured into the nucleolus now the 45s ribosome the 45s ribosomes are processed you can see the 45s ribosome they are going to get processed it means the uh, splitting splicing process is going to take place so during this 45s ribosome it lose some of the rna and protein and they split and here they get separated from each other and due to which the larger subunit and the smaller subunit the formation will take place suppose 18s rna 5.8s rna then 28s rna these kinds of ribosomal subunit it is going to produce and here when subunits they come together in the cytoplasm they are the one which will give rise to the formation of the protein synthesis the next function of the nucleolus is the formation of rrna so as the ribosomes they are produced by the nucleolus ribosomes are the one which are involved in synthesis of the rrna so nucleolus by the process of transcription 
involved in formation of various kinds of rrna which are required to form subunits of the ribosomes so jaise hi uh, as the rrna are formed here they are able to form the subunits of the ribosome now the next is the protein synthesis as we can see that this is mrna and here these are the two subunits of ribosome small subunit and the larger subunit here the tRNA along with amino acid they will come and the protein synthesis is taking place so as we know that nucleolus is the one which is involved in formation of the subunits of ribosome and here the subunits of the ribosome they are coming together and protein synthesis is going to takes place the maggio scientists and others they suggested that protein synthesis takes place in the nucleolus and here there are some cell biologists which suggest that ribosomal proteins are synthesized by the nucleolus now nucleolus they also play important role in the mitosis as it also act as a nucleolar reorganizer nucleoplasm here in this diagram you can see this region it is the nucleoplasm or you can say the nuclear cell here it is transparent it is semi solid and kind of a granular and it is going to be acidic because there is presence of the dna and dna it has a phosphate group that is why the dna it is going to be acidic so the nucleoplasm it is also going to be acidic further here this space it is filled between the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane the nuclear components such as chromatin thread it is going to be present the nucleoprotein granules are going to be present like the histone and here this region there are number of events which are taking place like the replication of dna transcription and the transport material will also takes place the fourth component is the chromatin fiber here the thread like structure which are coiled these structure are called as chromatin chromatin fibers they are clearly observed when the cell they are in the interface of the cell cycle here you can see the dna and dna when it is with the histone protein they are called as chromatin the chromatin it always look like a thread with a beaded structure so this region is chromatin when the chromatin here it is more condensed it give rise to the chromosome so here during mitosis during the cell division here the chromatin becomes coiled and becomes and give rise to a structure that is chromosome here when we talk about the chromosome they also have the heterochromatin and the euchromatin region as in this diagram you can see the dna it is in the form of the chromatin here there are some dense structure there are some darkly stained structure called heterochromatin and there are some uh, light stained structure that is called as euchromatin so here the dna when they are in the chromatin form here also you can see the heterochromatin and euchromatin and even in the chromosome also there are the euchromatin and heterochromatin can be observed here when we see this diagram where the chromatin it is more dense it is more compactly arranged this region is called as heterochromatin and the region where the chromatin it is loosely arranged this region is called as euchromatin when we compare the euchromatin which is loosely arranged and we compare the heterochromatin which is compactly arranged here the transcriptionally active it is going to be euchromatin as you can see the euchromatin it is very loose here the easy transcription process and easy translation process will takes place but when the structure it is very compact here all together it is very difficult for the uh, enzymes to work on this so the transcription process doesn't takes place in these compact structures so here you can see the compact structure is heterochromatin and loose structure is a euchromatin heterochromatin it is this region which is highly condensed here it is very condensed during the interphase and whenever we stain these heterochromatin it appears dark so that is why they are darkly stained and it cannot be transcribed it means there are no enzymes which can stick into this and here the dna it is unable to convert into the rna and rna it is unable to convert into protein or an other 
other words you can say the flow of information from dna to rna and rna to protein here it doesn't takes place because these structure they are very compact and when we talk about the euchromatin it is uncondensed it is loosely arranged so on this the enzymes they work very efficiently and the flow of information from the dna to rna and rna to protein takes place very efficiently that is why the transcription it is easy in heterochromatin it is composed of 25 angstrom fibrils it is considered to be genetically inert at it is, as it is not involved in tr for transcription process it is not involved in synthesis of dna and when we talk about the euchromatin it contains 30 to 80 angstrom in diameter and it can be transcribed because they are loosely arranged and very efficiently the enzymes can work on them and here the rna and then protein formation can easily takes place so this is how all about the nucleus was and here the video ends and thank you very much